Did you know that some of the most important financial education on the planet is taught right here in this space? And yet it doesn't really look much like a schoolroom, does it? I don't see any yellow school buses. Kids, for the most part, never enter this building. And that's because this is not a primary place of education, like a school, a junior high, a high school, or even a university. This is where secondary education occurs with some of the world's most successful people. And there are places like this all over the planet. And the reason why they exist is because the school system today is so dated and is filled, frankly, with a lot of lies that are no longer helping our kids prepare for the real world. In fact, there are three lies in particular that are holding most people back from living their most successful life possible and today I'm gonna to expose what those three lives are lies come on Chris that sounds a little bit extreme lies that we were taught in school that's keeping us from having our most successful life possible well let me actually prove it according to the data right here I have fifty thousand dollars this is the average amount of money that you will earn leaving college on the other side I've got two hundred thousand dollars this is the amount of money that your boss that the owner of the company you work for will make on paying you $50,000 because they typically want to make four times more money than they're actually willing to pay you, which kind of begs the question, are you really being set up financially for your most successful life or are you really just being trained to be a cog in someone else's machine? To all the parents who entrust me with your children, I promise I'm going to be filling their head with some good stuff today because we've all been lied to, or rather, what was true then is no longer true today. I got some financial truth bombs to drop on all of us. For just a moment, let's talk about TED Talks because, by the way, this is where some of the world's most important education for adults and other people actually occurs. It's not within the halls of a university or a school system. And check this out. During multiple TED Talks, the late educator Sir Ken Robinson raised the point that, quote, if you're not prepared to be wrong, you'll never come up with anything original, end quote. Unfortunately, school encourages just the opposite. Wrong answers are punished, which, depending on the teacher or school, can even include just differing opinions. In other words, don't take risks. You know, follow the safe and steady paths. Don't be people, be bad sheeple get good grades, work for somebody else, and all of a sudden you hope, just like my father taught me, that I'll be taken care of by the end of my days. But in your mid-60s, you're going to have $200,000. That's it. That's what you're going to have for retirement. That is the financial end game. That is the byproduct of the system that we're training our kids to be in. And I get it. We need employees. We need people to work for other people. But there are other options and we are not training those other options and it starts with this idea that um, whatever you do don't be wrong and don't take risks but I'm telling you right now I have failed a lot but a lot of people they they share in the winnings of my accolades because those risks ended up netting me something far greater sometimes the worst mistake is actually playing it safe because there's a, a, a due date there's a doomsday there's a moment of reckoning where you say, wow, I never took any risks. And that's why I was never rewarded in life. Memorization will make you a certain amount of money, but the truth is with the internet and with everything sitting in a little black box in our pocket, talking to the internet and giving us answers for everything, why are we still using an antiquated system where education equals memorization? This is the second major lie. The entire American education system revolves around preparing for standardized tests. These tests lead to the widespread practice of test cramming and rote memorization of facts, both of which are proven to be the worst ways to gain true understanding. In other words, is our education system inspiring us to be lifelong learners? Do we know how to learn and educate on our own? Or is it really about getting grades and passing tests, which by the way leads to a lot of stress? Well, I got a couple of facts that are a little bit scary that talk about what education looks like when you end in your younger years your formal education process. And this stuff to me is disgusting. 
In life, you're either a creative human being creating the life that you want, or you're a robot that is just regurgitating old information. And the difference between the two is whether or not you are allowing new information into your system, or whether you've said, I've got it, I've learned enough, and I'm done. Check out these very sad facts of life. 33% of high school grads and 42% of college grads never read another book in their entire life. In other words, however their education was, they were not inspired to continue learning. How they learned, sit down, shut down, raise your hand, no, you can't go to the bathroom, rules, regulation, do these things instead of free thinking, innovating, creating, all of that's been suppressed. People are like, dude, I'm done with education. At least 33% of high school grads, 42% of college grads. Check this out, 53% of fourth graders read every day but by eighth grade, that number is now only 20%. They're only reading one in five days. So somehow the loss of love of learning either was never established or never continued past junior high. And by the time high school's done or just mandatory reading in college, we're done. And it leads to this, 83%, which is a staggering huge number of teenagers say that school is a significant source of stress in their life. That is opposite of what I want for my kids and hopefully what you want for your life or maybe your posture or your kids, because this model is teaching us to be these cogs in someone else's great machine being controlled rather than being a part of this entire creation process where life is unfinished, the tapestry is, is only half made, in your agency, your ability to think, your ability to, to get new information, your ability to develop new skills and new abilities and act out, that dies, that ends with these younger educational years where some of my most powerful education is going on right now in my life, but technically college was a long ways ago. My wife and I are coming up on four years now having taken our kids out of public school because we noticed as their education was progressing from elementary school to junior high, that there was more sadness, that became depression, there was more stress and anxiety, and they were overall just becoming less and less happy. And I started to ask myself, whatever it is they are learning, is it worth the emotional unintelligence? Is it worth the fact that they like their lives less? And uh, my wife and I said, you know what? We can do better than this. What if we went and found the most inspiring teachers and what if we hired them? What if we brought them into our home? What if we could control, by the way, weeding out all the things of the educational system and all the lies that we don't like, all the propaganda, all the garbage? And what if we could literally centralize our education on our core value system and the things that we know to be most important for life? And I gotta be honest, it was this, at first, huge experiment because I'm an entrepreneur. I mean, my wife and I are definitely outside the box and uh, in her family, on her side, there's definitely a, a high respect for academia, my actual side of the family as well. And we basically said, you know what? We don't believe that what we learned in school is what we actually, what our kids need today. They need to learn how to be free thinkers, problem solvers, innovators, creators, and we started asking this question because school was damaging their psyche by saying, well, you're either good at math or you're not, or you're good at English or you're not, or you're good at history or you're not, or you're good at science or you're not. And I'm like, that is a, first of all, I don't know many adults today that are like, oh yeah, what I learned in chemistry, I use every day in my career. Eh. Oh, what I learned in history is really vastly important to what I use in, in, in my career. Eh. Like, like math, um, trigonometry, like calculus, like, most of what we learn in school is youth is useless in today's world. So my wife and I started asking, what is going to be useful? What's gonna be meaningful? And what's gonna inspire them to be lifelong educators? And we decided to buck the system and remake it in our image according to our ideals. And I can't honestly tell you how the story ends because we're in our fourth year and I'm about to graduate my first daughter from that system. Uh, but I'll tell you, I'm never going to regret having done it because the world today needs something very different than this third lie that is taught in school that I 100% disagree with. The third concern that I have and the third biggest lie that is happening in school right now is this. 
kids are being taught to conform to the herd and that conformity is super damaging. Modern schools, they're still based on the same industrial revolution era format used to develop obedient, routine factory workers. However, the types of jobs which favor the habits and capacities of a factory worker are becoming rarer and rarer by the day. This outdated classroom style coupled with the normal human desire to be accepted by a group creates a toxic conformist environment. Like you may not even realize that the grades that your kid is earning, like an A grade, a B grade, a C grade, literally goes back to the industrial revolution when they had people literally working in milk factories and they were grading milk as A grade milk, B grades. Like this is so old, ancient and antiquated and it needs to be completely reimagined because today's education should be all built upon access, not memorization. Um, individuality and being unique and discovering how you're intelligent instead of being told that you must be intelligent in these same five ways or you're never going to make it, that system, it's over. You know, I've got an interesting philosophy for my kids. When they're learning something, if they're not good at it, I have to ask, is this a practical skill that will be useful for them? If so, I want them to learn it. But there's a lot of things that the school system says we should be learning that frankly aren't gonna be relevant to their adult life. And frankly, instead of focusing on tasks and everyone conforming to learning these basic skills, I'm more interested in who you can become. So the question for me isn't, are you intelligent with these five things? It's how are you intelligent? And let's focus on who you can actually become instead of the tasks that you can perform. And let's lean in and figure out what those are. Every person has unique talents, interests, strengths, and weaknesses. Even the most well-intentioned teacher cannot meet everyone's individual needs. I mean, just imagine how crazy it is to have a teacher in charge of 30 kids. There's no other way they can educate unless they just teach them all the exact same stuff and make them all learn at the same rate and do the exact same thing instead of developing all their unique factors and capabilities. We're all responsible for pursuing what we find meaningful in life. And if you don't know what it takes to achieve your goals, then you've got to find someone, you got to find a mentor, you got to find someone who can train you to develop that. And that means that we've got to learn how to customize the educational process. And that doesn't happen here. And unfortunately, by the time you graduate from this model, the um, love of learning usually is not present as the stats have shown. And we just get landlocked in a field of living, a, a job type, an art type. And we're going to stay in that lane most of our life. And most of us are going to miss out on what we're really capable of because of this education model. You are capable of so much more. And remember, after all, the whole reason why we're trying to get good grades is so that we can go to college where we're going to get career training, where we're going to work for someone else our entire life. And that's not entirely bad, except that 85% of us don't like what we do for a living. So I guess for that group, it is bad. And for the rest that actually they're on point, they love what they're doing, they're, they're intrapreneurs, growing a company they're passionate about, or maybe they love being a doctor or a nurse or a lawyer, they're in their lane, good for them. Most of us are not in our lane, which means that the next level of education that you need isn't career training. It's not specialized training. It's financial training. Because what financial training will do is it will free you from your current lane that may not be working for you and it will expose a hundred or a thousand or infinite other lanes where you can financially succeed in life in a way that school is not designed to teach you. Where does this education begin? Well, it starts by being a subscriber here or following other people that are giving you financial training that can free you from the matrix, from the system, from the single lane life, the single income life. And I have a gift to help you on your journey. If you find that I'm that mentor for you, this book, Have It All, is designed to show you the roadmap of infinite possibilities. Literally, the information in this book has the power to help some of you become financially free in less than five years. There's no gimmicks, there's no get rich quick. It's literally sharing with you what you should have learned in school and they failed you. They didn't have financial training, they didn't have financial advice, they had a lot of bad financial advice, and they had a lot of role models. Frankly, there are poor that all they could ever do was teach you how to get some basic knowledge and information and work for somebody else. But if you want more for yourself, it's not going to be inside the lies of that system. It's going to be found on your own with the right mentors. And I'm telling you right now, this book, its knowledge does not exist in the world. I wrote this as my fifth book. It is a financial gift to the planet saying, 
If you learn to think this way for our post-pandemic world, if you're millennial Gen Z, this is the training that will bridge the gap and help you learn to think about money differently than your parents did so that, like me, you might be financially free in your mid-20s or you might be now me in my early 40s going on missions around the world with my foundation, changing lives and saving lives. There's this cool life awaiting you when you don't worry about this stuff anymore because you learn how to responsibly be a good steward of it, you learn how to grow it, and it takes you the right kind of education to get you there. Click the link below, grab your copy, let me give you what you need to win and financially succeed in life. Oh, it's too late for you, right? You went through the education system and model and now it's just like, oh, Chris, I, I bought the lies, I'm screwed. No, that's not true. Um, right now, you're probably asking yourself, how do I get out of the rat race? How do I get out of this lane that I feel stuck in? And I've made a video for you that will show you exactly what you need to do to get out of the rat race and pull yourself ahead. Click right here, watch this video. Enjoy, my friend.